Last time in Timber and Stone, I started a new settlement where the villagers set up a camp, stockpiled resources, built walls, and fought off terrifying enemy raids. A massive wolf attack took out most of the settlement until it was fended off by the valiant efforts of Mappa. But with just Mappa and his presumably brother Bappa remaining, managing the settlement would be near impossible. So they decided to pack up their things and head out and find a new group to band with. They chose a quaint spot next to the seashore, and with location chosen, I started delegating jobs to the new band of villagers. Baba and Mappa both retained their previous jobs of tree chopper, and joining them would be Smith, the blacksmith, Christopher, the forager, Farmer Fran and Farmer Fred, Sir Roxalot, the stonemason, and Reginald, the town's carpenter. With the new group of settlers' jobs assigned, I got started right away in setting up work for each of them, designating stone to mine, workshops to build, and farms to tend. Seeing as we currently had no ore to process, I temporarily set Smith to be a miner. And with all the setup complete, I unpaused the game, and the settlers immediately got to work, spreading out and each heading to their respective jobs. Christopher began gathering some early food for the settlers, while the miners obtained stone to craft tools. I designated a dedicated quarry with stone storage right next to it, so the miners wouldn't have to carry it all the way back every time. Then did the same with log storage for the wood choppers. I finished setup by designating a hall, livestock pen, and roads connecting to the edge of the map to allow for trade. I could only connect two sides though, so I designed a bridge that would hopefully allow us to connect to a third. And by this point, the settlement was well on its way. Fran and Fred tilled the farm, Reginald the Builder constructed the animal pen, Sir Roxalot and the other miners expanded the quarry, and the woodcutters Mappa and Bappa continually gathered wood. Noticing the prosperity of our settlement, a trader came along offering copper ore, which would be essential in helping level up Smith's blacksmithing abilities. We were also able to buy some twine for fishing rods. With the copper obtained, I designed a forge, and with the twine I made fishing rods, and assigned Mappa to once again be a fisherman. Suddenly, things were shaken up when a goblin was found near the mine. I was hoping it would just run away, but it ended up approaching camp, forcing a response. I sent Fran, Fred, and Reginald in to slay it. With it being a 3v1, they won, and the goblin's corpse became fertilizer for our crops. A couple more goblins arrived, but utilizing numbers advantage led to two more easy wins. With the enemies fended off, the settlers settled down, and things went back to normal. Until not long after, when a couple of wolves started chasing down Christopher, he led them back to camp, where his friends could help take them down. At this point, it seemed like threats were becoming more commonplace, so I built more beds to heal those wounded in battle. In addition, I started laying out the design for a moat and a wall, so we would have a more defensible settlement. By this point, the bridge had finished construction, so I was able to design a road and finally connect to the third side of the map. This would increase our chances for more traders and migrants to appear. And Smith was almost high enough level to make solid tools, which required ingots to craft, but would not break during use. Since he was almost level 6, I decided to just make him build and destroy a bunch of minecarts over and over to get the remaining XP required to level up. While building the moat, Reginald and Sir Roxalot spotted a skeleton. The skeleton's bite attack was no match for their clubs, and they made quick work of it. Next, after building countless minecarts, Smith finally reached level 6 blacksmith and could finally start making stronger tools. He got right to work and put the new forge to use, first making solid tongs to forge with, then moving on to the other tools. At some point, Mappa and Christopher seemed to have become fishing buddies and were often seen fishing together, bolstering the larder. Mappa's brother, on the other hand, didn't have such good luck. As he was chopping trees, a few goblins appeared from out of the woods. They chased him all the way back to camp, where the settlers joined together to fight them off. A melee ensued, but the settlers' numbers advantage and superior weaponry led to victory with no casualties. The wounded settlers broke in the spiffy new beds, but there was no time to rest, as a goblin came out of nowhere and barged right into camp. This goblin must have been an animal rights activist, since despite facing overwhelming odds, it broke the door to the animal pen, freeing all the animals. Reginald fixed the gate, then became a herder to return all the animals. The settlers then got back to work, and watched from a distance as a skeleton and a goblin fought each other while swimming. That was weird. Anyway, after the action had settled down, a migrant arrived and wanted to join the settlement. The settlers welcomed Isabella with open arms, and she started helping construct the wall. I could finally say that the settlement was prospering. The crops were yielding full harvests, and the food stores were bountiful, allowing Christopher to finally pursue his passion of becoming a tailor. I expanded the farm to attract more migrants, as we would need more hands to power the growing settlement. 
Noticing our budding prosperity, a trader came to exchange more copper ore, which was needed for tools and weapons. But more prosperity meant a greater risk of enemy raids, so I ordered the miners to break the roads to fill the moat with water. And not a moment too soon, as a pack of wolves appeared right after. The settlers, protected by the cloth armor sewn by Christophern, could overpower the wolves. Once the pack thins, the wolves usually scatter, making it easy to clean up the stragglers. After the attack, the miners dug out the other road, allowing water to flow into the moat from the other side. I rebuilt the road so we could once again have traders. Ideally, we could put a door at all the entrances later. There was no break from the action though, as while Christophern was out gathering, another pack of wolves chased after him. The villagers came out to help him, and they claimed victory. Hopefully this would send a message to the wolves to stop messing with us. But there was truly no rest for this group of villagers, as when Christophern was out foraging, he spotted a group of skeletons with a necromancer in the middle controlling them. This enemy has the terrifying ability to shoot fireballs and light trees ablaze. The skeleton horde entered through an unfinished wall segment, and a vicious battle ensued. Nearly all the villagers joined together for the fight. First, they took out the vanguard group of skeletons, then tore through the main forces. While this was happening, Mappa, who had been converted to an infantry, snuck around the outskirts of the battle and approached the necromancer. But while he was doing this, in the chaos of battle, Reginald fell to one of the skeletons. The remaining army, enraged by the loss of their comrade, launched a flurry of attacks to defeat the remaining skeletons. All that was left now was the necromancer, and it was up to Mappa to defeat it. He landed one final blow, and the monster disappeared into a cloud of smoke. The battle was won, but the consequences were dire. In addition to losing their friend Reginald, the settlement lost access to their only high-level carpenter. Noticing the threat level of enemies has been rising, I started training up Isabella as an infantry which was the right decision, as a group of skeletons started approaching the base. Behind them, a necromancer appeared. Turns out it was behind the attack. The moat didn't prove very effective, as it turned out the skeletons could just swim around it. The settlers dealt with one of the skeletons, then crossed over the moat to fight the rest of them. With the skeletons mostly dealt with, the group rushed to the necromancer. Fred the farmer dealt the killing blow, eradicating the threat. With the threat of enemies gone, the settlement went back to normal, the wounded settlers slept to recover HP, and the miners finished the moat. Seeing as enemies could swim through the moat, I built a wall on the coastline to funnel them through the entrances. Which is exactly what happened, when a group of goblins rushed through the main entrance. I grouped the villagers together to face the goblins head on. This is usually a pretty good strategy, as it spreads out the damage keeping most of the villagers safe, while the numbers advantage means they will overwhelm the enemies. The battle began, and the group quickly took out the first few goblins with their spears and swords. But I didn't notice that while this was happening, two of the goblins split off from the group and were infiltrating deeper into the settlement. These two were apparently not animal rights activists like the previous one was, as they killed a chicken and a sheep before the herder and the rest of the group could fight them off. And finally, after fending off seemingly endless waves of monsters, the settlement returned to stability. The villagers could finally rest, and we had the resources to construct better beds now. We traded to increase our stockpile of ore, which was used to arm the villagers with improved weapons. Then placed doors at the entrances to protect against enemy attacks. The miners worked through day and night, and I expanded the mine to increase our ore stores. Mappa took a liking to the new door, and was often seen fishing from atop the wall segments near it. I trained Bappa and the other villagers as infantry to help better defend the village from invaders. Before long, the wall was nearly complete, and the village was booming. I got a notification that a skeleton had died to an unknown killer, and when I zoomed over, I saw a dead skeleton and a bunch of dead spiders on the corner of the map. Creepy. I decided to designate a bridge to be built there so we could investigate. When Mappa went to build it, a huge pack of wolves chased him all the way back to the village. But we had several trained infantry now, and along with the rest of the villagers, they scared off the wolves. But soon after, they returned with a much bigger pack, and in the midst of battle, Fran ended up dying. The villagers once again defeated the wolves, and with the threat dealt with, construction on the bridge could finally begin. Another necromancer threatened the village, but the villagers now had infantry soldiers and strong weapons, so taking it out was a piece of cake. Out of nowhere, a boar decided to enter the village and make its home in the mine, so I decided to name it Oinkers, as a symbol for prosperity and peace. I had Adam, one of the migrants that joined the settlement, train an archery, but somehow he ended up hitting himself with an arrow and dying. So I scrapped that idea, and decided instead of having archers patrolling around the wall, I would just have infantry patrol the entire map. Next we got a new migrant, Salfina, and having learned my lesson with ace archer Adam, I had her trained to become an infantry instead. The infantry patrolling the map plan was stellar. The soldiers were dealing with threats before they even got close to the wall. 
The settlement was a success! Some were lost along the way, but with bountiful resources and a trained army to defend them, the village would be safe from any future threats. At last, oinkers could walk around freely, symbolizing the peace and freedom the villagers worked so hard to obtain.